Anyway, today, as you know, is Father's Day. And the Bible has a lot to say about dads. And if you're young, here are some verses of how your dad should treat you. If you're a dad, here's verses on how you should conduct yourself and so forth and so on. And the Bible has a lot to say about it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So first of all, the number one thing we need to remember on this Father's Day is God is the Father. He, he is the ultimate Father. He is the example for all of us to go by. In other words, the Lord shows we men how to be the right kind of father, and it's time that we as men follow that instead of the popular trends that we are seeing dads following nowadays. In Ephesians chapter four and verse six, it says, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. You could tell that was a Southerner that wrote that. <laughs> now, here's what this means. For us to follow God as the ultimate Father, the Spirit of God must be inside of us. It is impossible to follow the example of the Heavenly Father if you don't belong to Him. To, to be the right kind of father, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. Ephesians chapter one and verse three said, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Here again, another classic example. God is always continually blessing his children. Dads, what are we? Are we a blessing to our children? Or are we a curse to our children? What are we? Are we a problem or are we something that they look forward to seeing coming in the door? If God the Father continually blesses his children, should we not at least Endeavor to do the same. Malachi 2.10. Have we not all one father? Hath not one God created us? So why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant? Listen to this carefully. By profaning the covenant of our fathers. What we really need to do as dads is remember those who have gone on before us that set the example of what a real man is supposed to be like. Boy, I'm gonna tell you something, that's a dying breed. It really is. Most of our forefathers would be very embarrassed to see of what we have become. We, folks, we've lost our way. We've lost our perspective. We've lost our manhood. And we've become a nation of whiners. If you want to know what the perfect example of a whining man looks like, look at the Medicare commercial with Broadway Joe Namath on there. That makes me sick to my stomach every time that thing comes on and he's going, I want to get what I deserve. And I'd like to get away with <laughs> Come on, men, quit whining. There ain't nothing worse than a whining man. There really isn't. There's nothing worse. And hollering about what you deserve. I'll tell you something. You know what? We don't deserve nothing. We need to earn what we have. People always act like, my daddy always told me, boy, the world don't owe you a living, and I knew exactly what he meant by that. It's, it, it's time to get back to being men again. To be a man is not easy, it's tough. It requires sacrifice, it 
requires blood, sweat, and tears. It really does, and it requires discipline. It's time to get back to being men again. Once we have a nation of real men again, can I get political? You doggone right, I got the microphone, so you're gonna have to listen to me. (laughs) Once we have a nation of real men again, we won't see idiots like that up in our capitals anymore. We won't. They'll get that, a a, a man, if a real man looked at that and go, that's what's supposed to be governing us? That's what's supposed to be our president? We need to get a, we need to get sticks and pitchforks and, and torches and go up there and get them out of there. Amen. Yeah. Instead of whining about their Medicare. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. John 14, verse 9 through 11. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? Jesus was God in the flesh. When he was here, he was the very embodiment of God. He in the flesh. Jesus is the Father in the flesh. Isaiah 64, 8, but now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, thou art thou our potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. I'm gonna give dads another little assignment if you don't know about it. As a father, Your job is to mold and form your children in what they are supposed to be. Let me say that again. It is your job, your job, to mold and form your children in what they are supposed to be. Now, I know the Freudian and the Jungian psychologist and what they've done to pretty much destroy the family, but they will look at you when, and when you think of doing that and they're gonna, you're gonna hurt their individuality. Well, let me tell you something. My daddy hurt my individuality quite a few times when I was coming up. Whew. Fathers, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. Stop letting your children to grow up to be thugs and infidels. If you don't raise those children, the world will. And we're seeing that where the dads are so trifling and so lazy, they've let the world raise their children. Then they come crying, what did I do wrong? Well, you did everything wrong. You let the world raise your children. Now look at what we got. 52 genders now. People don't know what they are anymore. And you know who I blame for that? I blame the dads for that. You can't blame it on the school system. They're a bunch of communist perverts to start with. That's all they know is what the Secretary of Education tells them to say. They don't get their instructions from the school board. They need to get their instructions from daddy. That's the problem right now, 52 genders and the critical race theory where you're supposed to be ashamed of what you are. And now for the military, we've got stress cards. When your platoon leader or your drill instructor says something out of the way, you can hold up a stress card I'd like to see you hold that stress card up with about a thousand bullets a minute of whizzing over your head. You know why? The enemy could not give a rat's behind about your stress card. You need to be a man is what you need to be, holding up a stress card. And because of the sorry dads that we have in this nation right now, we have safe spaces. My dad had what he called a safe space at home. It was called the gun cabinet. (laughs) You got in trouble, that's where you ran for that. Safe spaces? Let me tell you, people don't care if you have a safe space. That's an easier place to kill you. You need to grow a backbone. And you need to stand up for your family. Instead of hollering, tell your family to run to their safe spaces. My father would have had a stroke if somebody told him that. Grow, listen to me, grow a backbone and then give one to your kids. 
That's what made America great was a spine, not a safe space. Somebody always worrying about getting their feelings hurt. Lord have mercy. Stick your head at the door for two minutes and you can get your feelings hurt. You need to grow a thicker skin too. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. As a dad, you need to teach your children that there is hope. A lot of kids are turning to all kinds of intoxicants because they don't think there's any hope. They don't believe there's any hope and they probably see you do it as well because you feel like you don't have any hope. You need to get the hope that is found in Jesus Christ and you need to tell your children there is hope and hope alone in Jesus Christ. Give them something to hope. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. My Father never gave me anything but good. Everything my daddy gave to me and taught to me was for my good. Just as our Heavenly Father does. Everything the Lord gives you is good. So what are you giving your children? Dads, what are you giving them? Are you raising them to love Jesus? Are you raising them to love the world? The world doesn't care about them. The world will drain them dry and leave them. What are you teaching them? What are you giving your children? As a father, listen to this. As a father, it is your duty, not somebody else's. It's your duty to give them an example to follow. If they follow you and end up in the pit, that's your fault. It is your duty as a father to give them a Christian home. My daddy did not send me to church. He took me to church. Every time when we we went up the street, we went to church every Sunday, and my dad took me. And he made sure I went. Another thing my dad did, because I I left home, let's see, I don't know about what age it was, but I'd come dragging in, not tell this, (laughs) two, three o'clock in the morning, and here was a conversation. My mom would still be awake. My dad, he was asleep because he was waiting in the morning for me. My mom would say, what in the world you think you're doing out this late at night? And I said, I'm a grown man. And she, <laughs> she'd say, you wait till you have kids of your own, you'll, you, you'll understand. I said, I will never do that. <laughs> I had to go and apologize to her five times, one for each kid, three or four times for Andy. <laughs> then my dad would get up in the morning and I'd just gotten to sleep for a couple of hours. And there was a wall between my room and the kitchen and he would take his fist and hit it three times. He didn't say a word. That meant you're gonna get up and you're going to church no matter how tired you are because you are under my roof. And that's what he told me. I'd, I'd go walking like them people wearing masks going up in Walmart <laughs> like that to church. But I went and I stayed awake because he sat behind me. So give him a Christian home. As a father, it is also your duty to give them a legacy and a name to be proud of. I remember back in the 70s, I went to a funeral of a relative who stayed drunk all of his life except the last two weeks before he died and thank God he got saved then and the little mousy pastor up there that was doing the funeral did not know him from Adam and was saying, we need to follow this man's legacy and this man's example of what a great father and husband he was. And I spoke up loud and I looked at my mom, she was sitting, I said, are we in the right funeral? And she said, shut up. (laughs) 
she's had to shut me up a number of times. Oh my goodness, when you die as a dad, don't expect the pastor to lie for you. Let him tell something that is a true legacy of what kind of a man you were because your children will know the difference anyway. Lying over somebody at the funeral ain't gonna do them a bit of good, no way. Matthew chapter six and verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Teach your children forgiveness. That's really important. It really, really is important. You know, a lot of times you, people will say, well, you don't know what so-and-so did to me. Doesn't matter. Look what they did to the Lord. And he forgave. Forgiveness is the name of the game for Christians. And if your children see you practice that, they will practice that as well. Now, Matthew 6, 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Dads, 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 feed your family. Feed your, I can't believe I'm saying that, that I have to say that. Feed your family. All I can tell you is growing up, I never worried for one moment when my dad was there because I knew he was taking care of everything and he did. My folks didn't have a lot of money, so daddy learned how to become an electrician, a plumber, and a mechanic. I've watched him do all of it. He never got anybody to come do anything. He did it all himself. And the house never burnt down, it never flooded. And the car always ran. And we always had plenty of food. And then when I grew up and found out how little my dad made, I wonder how in the world did they make it on that? Because I thought we had money. Because he took charge and took care. It, it, the name of the game, dads, is get out there and hustle. Provide for your family. I mean, look at the bird. Anybody ever watched two birds raise their babies before? That is some work. They are flying, grabbing something, flying back, and they're doing that all day long until dark. I get tired watching them do that, but they're feeding their family. They really are. And if the birds know how to do it, what's wrong with us? There are so many deadbeat dads in jail right now because they would not take care of their family. And it is your responsibility to take care. Nobody, no one else's, yours. So provide for your family so they don't ever have to worry about anything. I remember talking to Donna's daddy, the last conversation I had with him before he died. He was telling me, he, he had, I forget how many jobs he had. He worked for the city, he was a tree surgeon, he was also, he flipped houses and rebuilt those, and he also repaired cars and sold those. And he rarely had a moment to sit down. And he said, I'm doing this for Peggy, talking about her mom. He said, I want to make sure she never goes without anything and I'm going to provide. And he took care of her. And was it easy? No, because it was hard for him as getting as old as he was to hustle like that. But he did because he wanted to provide. And I, that's what I've always remembered Johnny Burst from. And I, and I take my hat off to that man. He was a great dad and a great husband. And mine was like that too. I watched my dad go out one winter morning. There was a foot of snow on the ground. And I've told it many, many times. He, he had a 51 Chevrolet pickup truck. That was his pride and joy. He went out and shoveled a path to that truck, jacked up the back of it, put chains on it, uh, shoveled the driveway out, and got in and headed to work with a 102 degree temperature where he was sick. And I said, Daddy, why in the world are you doing that? He said, because it ain't going to get done if I don't go out there and do it. That's old school. Oh, thank God for old school because that's why we're all sitting where we are is because of some old school men, you know. I remember Jim Griggs dad. Man, that was a man's man's man right there. You ain't never seen such a big man. And he was an electrician. And he was, and he was a wonderful, godly man, one of the toughest men I'd ever met. Of course, if he's bigger than Jim, he gotta be tough. 
he was over at the school one day after we bought it. And he was an electrician, but he didn't have any of his tools with him. And he was trying to determine the voltage coming out of the fuse box. So he did this. Oh, that's a 110. That's a 220. And it didn't do, I mean, I, I was always in the admiration of that, but I ain't never tried that before, but he did it. Loved that man. He was a great provider, and he was a great husband and a father, and I've heard that from his whole family. Those are old school real men, and that's what America needs to get back to again if we are ever going to make this nation worth a hoot any longer. We gotta stop the whining, and we gotta stop the excuses and all the other stuff, and we need to understand what our family needs. Matthew 6.32 says, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Know the needs of your family. What does your family need? Don't make them have to ask you to take care of them. That should be a given. That should be an understanding. If the birds know how to do it, then great day, we ought to know how to do it. Now, we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna stop preaching and go to meddling here now. Matthew 15, 30, but he answered and said, Jesus answered and said, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And this is something that really gonna wear you out doing it, but it's gotta be done. Fathers, it is your duty, your duty to root out the bad influences in the lives of your children. Number one, keep them from watching the wrong things. They don't need to sneak anywhere to watch nothing. All they gotta do is turn this devil on. And there's a whole lot of children getting these things, quite frankly, that ought not be having them. They really ought not, because it's nothing but a door to the pits of hell. It's the truth, and you know it. Keep them from watching the wrong things. Keep them from reading the wrong things and keep them from hanging out with bad influences. Root them out, Dad. You're not there to be their buddy. You're there to be their father. And if you gotta put your foot down and say, no, you're not going there. You're not hanging out with those places. You're gonna save their soul from hell is what you're gonna do by being a little bit tough. Psalm 68, five, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. There are many of you today that don't have a dad, an earthly father anymore. Some of you never have. And you know what? That's okay. I want you to know that the Lord himself can be your father. He is your heavenly father and he knows even better than a good earthly father what to do for you. And he will look out for you, he will care for you, and he will help provide for you, and he will be there for you when nobody else will. Talk to him, he's not dead, he's still alive. He's there and he hears your prayers. Let him be your heavenly father today. He will help guide you. He will show you in his word the things you need to do. And for all of you dads out there, you need Jesus more than you ever have in your life. So do I. We all need him desperately to know what is the right thing to do as a father. Right now we're looking at a whole lot of damage because dads did not step up to the plate. It don't matter how old you are, dad, you can still do the right thing. You can still make it right with your children. It hasn't been a bed of roses since I started on my way. And Lord, you know I'm not complaining. There's just something I should say. For I've reached desperation. Stop. 
I've been weary through the years. Now I'm crying bitter tears from the depths of my heart. From the depths of my Just from the lips, it goes much deeper than the words. It's not a worthless expression. I just need to be heard, for I need to reach your throne. From the depths of my heart, from the depths of my depths of my heart and though I know I don't deserve you still I'm trying hard to serve you from the depths of my Ah. Uh -huh. 